Welcome to this overview of PXF Erode. So here I have an image that was keyed already. So it's an RGBA image with an alpha. It happens very often that you might want to erode an RGBA image uh, to create a core mat or to refine your edge. There's many cases where you would want to chew the alpha inwards, erode it, or expand the alpha outwards, dilate it. We already have a few nodes built into Nuke that do exactly that. We've got the dilate node here. So if I hook that up, I can create a dilate or an erode but the filter is pretty chunky. You can see it's creating those little squares everywhere. So it's pretty rough and it's not dealing with the RGB very well. So we could force it to only do it on the alpha, but then it's not touching our RGB at all. So if we use that on our over here or under, it's not doing what we're expecting here. We're expecting to chew uh, the character inwards and it's not working. To, to fix that, we would need to unpremalt the image, dilate the alpha or erode the alpha, and then premalt it again. So it's not impossible, uh, but it's more work. We have to create more nodes and uh, the filter is pretty chunky here. So uh, this is not exactly what I'm after. Alternately, I could use filter erode. So same, uh, same kind of vibe here. So by default, it's using a similar filter to the dilate node but you can choose a different one, for example, Gaussian, and that gives us a pretty good result on the alpha, but again, it's not touching the RGB, so it's only eroding the alpha. Again, we would need to unpremalt and premalt. This one is pretty good. I, I like the filter. Uh, it's still streaky. I'm not sure why the streaks are coming in like that, but this could be used definitely, but it's not exactly what I'm after either. Um, and then we have the plain erode node. So this one is pretty uh, pretty ropey. So I've got a really hard edge here. Again, it's not touching uh, the RGB. I could tell it to touch the RGB, but then it just disappears. <laughs> so that's not working. So I'm not happy with that. And also this is way too hard of an edge if I'm trying to blend a core mat with a hair key, for example. So you could blur it here, but as you blur it, you could see the alpha starts to grow. And a lot of these, their problem is that if you have uh, small holes like that, they end up filling the holes. So instead of going inwards, they actually grow. So if we uh, push the values really hard here, you can see that the... <laughs> The, our erode is making our alpha bigger than it was originally. So that's really not what I'm after. So you could go, well, make the size bigger. But as I make the size bigger, it keeps growing. So this is not uh, doing what I want either. So all of these erodes are useful. They have their place, but they're not perfect. And that's why we need an alternate option. So the alternate option would be PXF erode, of course. So let's bring that in and connect it here like so. So we have two main controls here. We have amount and gamma. Amount is how far in we want to go. So if I crank the amount, we're going inwards. It's pretty subtle, but we're going farther in and farther in. And if we want to uh, make the feather more aggressive, we want to lower the gamma. So if we make the gamma real low, then it's going to be really aggressive and then our amount is going to determine how far inside we want to go. So that's pretty cool. The, another good benefit here is that we're doing a min internally with the original alpha. So there is no way our erode can grow uh, the alpha. There's no way we can create webbing and uh, fill in some holes or fill in some corners. So that's a big benefit of PXF erode. On top of that, we're also dealing with the RGB. So internally, we are unpremalting the image, uh, doing the erode and premalting again with our eroded alpha, which means that when we do our under, it's behaving as expected. The actual entire image is being chewed, not just the alpha. We can use PXF erode on the RGBA channels. So RGB and alpha are being chewed. That's the classic behavior. New in this version, we can now choose alpha only. So now we are only chewing the alpha and not the RGB. And this might be useful if you have a little bit of a black edge, 
on your uh, key and you just want to erode the alpha a little bit without touching your RGB, now you can easily without uh, using a copy node. So uh, that's new. Uh, we've got the divide or unpremalt and multiply uh, value or premalt. Pre so auto will uh, automatically turn on and off the unpremalt whether you're uh, shrinking or growing the alpha. So when you're shrinking, you want to unpremalt and shrink then premalt. When you're growing, this makes no sense. So uh, if you do a negative amount, meaning you're doing a dilate, then unpremalt will be turned off automatically. Uh, same thing for multiply. If you're doing a negative amount, you don't want to do an unpremalt and premalt. So this will turn off when the values here are negative. And when you've got positive values, then it will turn on. So you can do erode and dilate with PXF erode safely. Uh, lastly, here you have the mix knob. So of course you can mix between the original uh, value and the result of the node, like most nuke nodes. So you can choose how much you want to see your erode. So you can uh, adjust it like that. And we have, of course, a mask input. So if you only want to erode some area of the frame, you can, of course, feed some sort of mask in the mask input and only erode some portion of your image. So there you go. That was an overview of PXF Erode. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.